Always my beat. From Times Square to Columbus Circle. The gaudiest. The most violent. The lonesomest mile in the world. Broadway's My Beat with Larry Thor as Detective Danny Clover. It happens faster on Broadway now, the coming of the night, and the time clock people go home to dinner in shadows. And far away from the time still yet to come, a wind drifts softly. It touches a cheek and quickens a step, finds a doorway and waits there, and its voice is a sigh of regret. The sounds of the river seem closer, and the neon blinks coldly. It's getting dark. And at police headquarters, those who had drifted in at 6 o'clock, those downstairs who were making complaints, those upstairs complained against, and the two in my office just because they've been sent there. Personally, I think it's a lot of nonsense. Nobody asked you, Vic. Nobody turned to you and asked for an opinion. I didn't see the The fact remains, Miss Morgan... The that... fact remains that ten minutes ago I got a permit to carry a gun. And your permit giver told me I ought to stop and talk to you. That's the fact. I suppose now you've gotten the permit, you're going out and buy a gun. As soon as I leave here. Polly, you need a gun like I need a hold... There's so many things you need, Vic. Manners. I let you escort me, darling. Don't louse it up with dialogue. Uh, that's the way it goes, Clover. Now tell me why you need that gun, Miss Morgan. Again? I told the permit giver. Tell me. Men. Hey, she's got to defend herself. Shut up, Vic. Be an agent for Polly Morgan and you get shut up, Vic. Maybe you'd better tell me, Vic. Uh, Polly Morgan, her. Big singer of sad ballads. A man's been calling her up threatening. The way all of you men threaten whether you say it out loud or not. Yeah, yeah, Polly, the way we all do. Also, she says the man's following her. You saw him. You saw him as well as I did. Yeah, I saw him, Polly. Did you, Vic? I saw a guy running on the street this morning. Polly said that's the man. He was. And when I went back to my apartment later, he called. He told me that was him who touched me in the crowd. He said he'd be there tonight. He's going to be where? Where I'm singing. The 13 Club. He said he'd be at the ringside tonight. Okay, I'll be there. If you want to. Come on, Vic. Come on, come on. And the room suddenly empty of her, and of the man whose gesture of farewell was a shrug, half begun, not finished. And the autumn darkness has brought you a variety of things. The rustle of silk perfumed only with the night wind. The scornful voice of a woman who walks close on the scalpel edge of a private terror. The permit for death held close to her. The grudging invitation to come, prevent it if you can. And fill in against the time of going with routine, the gathering, the sorting, the parceling out of the day's violence. Then the glance at the wall clock and the realization that you could be late. At the canopied entrance of the 13 Club, find Vic gnawing on the remains of a fingernail pause long enough to tell you... Molly's on, Danny. I got a table ringside all field for me. And the usher through the decor of bare shoulders and neckties bright with the signature of countesses. And through tears, wept into very dry martinis because Polly's song was nostalgia with her cover charge. And listen as Polly sang, her body leaning against the wall of remembered pain. she makes her exit. Like it was an egg and a pain that draw down X amount of dollars per week. An X that runs into four figures. Yeah, she's good. Yeah. Hard to believe, huh? Hard to believe how she can sing with so much feeling. Some girls sing from here and here from nowhere. Holly sings from here in the heart. It's difficult to figure, huh? It can happen. No, oh, not beef and mind you. It pays me well, this artificial heart she sets the beating in public places. She said the man who's been annoying her would be here at ringside. Do you see him anywhere, Vic? How would I know him if I saw him? A man running away from something in the street. That's an annoyance. I get the urge myself sometimes. You know any of these men around us? 
Yeah, that one there with the two blondes and the male lieutenant, that's Joey Crane. Hmm? His last wife made a settlement on him, a native village in Mallorca or someplace. He needs poly like this. Hey, uh, that one, over there, who looks like a scientist? Uh-huh, a scientist. When things are dull around here, I go over to him and discuss what's new in nuclear fission. And there's always something new. Polly interests him in terms of how soon she's going to explode. You think him? Was a cultured scientist? The one alone against the wall. What? Oh, him? <laughs> Daddy, I'm surprised at you. But do not be taken in by the rough and tumble three brothers. Hey, that's Polly. I heard her scream before. Uh, where is she? Sounds like from the dressing room, Danny. You think maybe... You gonna take me to her, Vic? Yeah, sure, sure. Come on. In here, Danny. Polly, take it easy. It's going to be all right. Get your hands off of me. Where'd he go, Miss Morgan? I have, I have the gun. I just killed him. Where'd he go, Miss Morgan? Hey, this window, Danny, looks like through here. We'd have seen him in the hall if he can't. He must have got in while Polly was on. What's the matter, Danny? Well, why do you look like that on me? What's your budget for publicity, Vic? Oh, well, Danny. Danny, what kind of talk is that at a time That's when... That's what it is to you, Mr. Clover. A man hides in here, waits for me. Tears at me and you. You can identify Miss Morgan? Yes, yes, yes. Get her coat, Vic. We have a file at headquarters. I want Miss Morgan to come You heard him, Vic. Get my coat. No. No. And no. All right. Here's some more pictures. Maybe his picture will be in this stack. I'm getting really bored, Mr. Clover. That's tough. You finally saw the man up close, didn't you? This is the way we operate. Bring you down to headquarters, let you look through pictures. Hope that you'll identify someone in the gallery, the man in... All right, all right, all right. Honey, why don't you go sit on the other side of the table? Go ahead, go ahead, over there. Look, Miss Morgan, I've got a thing to tell you. You're going to do it very badly. I've heard it from poets. You're a name on a police file. It means a job I've got to do. Outside of that, you don't mean a thing in the world. It really eats you, doesn't it? Look at the pictures. It really does. All right, now look at the pictures. Oh, hi, Margovan. Danny. Hello, Miss Morgan. You better stand over there, Margovan, on the other side of the table. What? Uh, forget it. What have you got? Oh, this, uh, from the description Miss Morgan gave the artist and technical. Here's a sketch. I'll show it to her. Would you mind taking a look at this, Miss Morgan? Mm hmm? This is him, all right. You're sure? Almost exactly. Nose a little straighter, eyes a little further apart. Thanks, Miss Morgan. I'll take you back to your apartment. Police procedure, too, Mr. Clover? <laughs> Stop at a desk on the way out. Issue orders for the printing and distribution of the likeness of a man who, in Polly Morgan, had found the sum and reason of his loneliness. A man who had touched her in a crowd, waited for her in a darkened room, clawed at her because she screamed at his despair. And take the woman home in silence. And from there, go to the silent, furnished room, draw down the bed covers, try for this night to sleep it away. morning at headquarters, be told there was someone waiting for you in your office. Find him there, peeking at things, furtively trying to rearrange them on your desk because you walked in on him at a bad time. Oh, I, uh, I, uh, they said you'd be a while coming. It seems uh, no one expected you so soon. Did you find what you're looking for? I wasn't looking for anything. It's a, uh, it's a sort of a habit, fingering what not mine to, that's right, habit. I, oh, I'm ashamed. Honestly. They said you wanted to see me. Why? Uh, that man, that man you police are looking for, well, I had no sooner finished tacking up his picture in my office, well, it came to me like that. It did? Oh, yes, why, that fellow's a guest in my hotel. I own a hotel, Jean Prouty, and he's a guest at my hotel. Who? This man you want, Lars Nielsen, a salesman out of Black River Falls, Wisconsin. Always comes to my hotel when he says it's our city, likes it because it's clean and quiet. Uh, just old people, really. You take me to him, Mr. Prouty. Oh, gladly. But uh, he's not there. I rushed up to his room to tell him you people wanted him for something, and he wasn't there. I just don't know where he might be. 
Yes, he's a fellow who's always bragging about what he calls dainty contact. He's... Danny Clover speaking. I saw him from the window, Mr. Clover. He's on his way up here. What will I do? What? You're alone, Miss Morgan? Yes, please. Hurry, Written by Morton Fine and David Friedkin and starring Larry Thor as Detective Danny Clover. September dies and Broadway mourns its passing without tears. Its days were ripped from the calendars, tossed into choked wastebaskets, carted away to public dumps. So what's to weep? For the gone days, the used up days, the scribbled on days... About face, kid. October waits for you with a promise in each and every nightfall. Blank, empty, panting to be filled in. Don't turn your back. Walk into it. Lead with your heart. There's neon to keep you warm. There's spectaculars to light your way. You'll hardly hear the sobbing because the winds are high on winter's eve. Walk into it, kid. It's time for another dream. Where I was, September lingered to give something to remember it by. The man lying in death. His blood etching out a new pattern on the monotone of the rug. And watching the delicacy of its flowing design, the woman who had waited on his dying. The woman who had killed him. You sure? You sure he's dead? Yes. I didn't want it that way. I only wanted... What, Miss Morgan? To frighten him. In spite of what I told you before, all I wanted was to scare him away. So he wouldn't touch me like that. Look at me like that. That's why you got the permit for the gun, only to frighten him away? I want him out of my sight. I want him taken out of here, do you understand? I'll take care of it. There have been other cases like yours, Miss Morgan. Cases where the woman didn't find it necessary to kill. I'm not like those women. I'm different. You've looked at me. Long. You've heard me sing. You know I'm different. Yes, you were killed. You think I could have stopped him with sweet talk? Hummed a torch song with my lips against his cheek? Is that what they did? Those other women you told me about? That's how they stopped him? Could have locked your door. It was locked. But he got in. After he was in, I opened it and asked him, please go. I remember I said, please. How did he get in? He stood beating on my door and beating and beating and beating. I screamed and then finally he went away. But he came back. Through the kitchen window. I heard the crash of glass. He must have come up by the fire escape. Broken the window. Show me. Through here. You see? You see? Uh huh. And from here he crowded you into the other room where you killed him. I asked him into that room. I said it would be nicer there. We could talk. Gave me time to get the gun. When he saw it, he laughed. He was laughing when. You want me to go somewhere with you, whatever has to be done now? Yeah. Sure you will, Miss Morgan. I give you good afternoon, Danny. Oh, thank you, Gino. And same to you. Likewise, I'm sure. Ah, Danny. What's the matter with you? Busy, busy, busy. Oh, I won't keep you, Gino. It's all right, it's all right. What's on your mind? 
I will relate to you the tale of Sergeant Gino Tartaglia and his trials of the last six hours, the interim between the time you found Mr. Lars Nielsen shot to death and the now. If anybody was a right arm to anybody, I am to the police department. Oh, that goes without saying, Gino. Agenda? To it. Upon the arrival of Mr. Nielsen in our morgue... You sure his name is Nielsen? You're fighting me, Danny. Oh, sorry. Accepted. <clears throat> Upon his arrival at our morgue, I had in Mr. Prouty, the hotel man, who did indeed identify him as his late departed guest named Lars Nielsen. Go on. And since Mr. Nielsen had been a denizen of Black River Falls, Wisconsin... You formed the chief of police there. Indeed I did. And a fine fellow he is, too. Come on, Gino. <clears throat> I related him the events concerning Mr. Nielsen and Miss Polly Morgan. Then I asked him a little something about Mr. Nielsen. Guess what he said. Must I, Gino? His fancy suits. However, he asked me which Lars Nielsen I was talking about since his records revealed two such having resided in Black River Falls. And? And I told him to give me info on both. An hour ago, he called back. And he said? This. One Lars Nielsen was a traveling salesman whose home was still in Black River Falls. The other was, of all things, a resident of New York, according to his folks, whom he interrogated. Hearing this, I have located in our city such a Mr. Nielsen, whose address I now hand to you. Well, thank you, Gino. Don't mention it. But now, Danny, I will twit you the way I was twitted. The chief of police did inform me that Miss Polly Morgan has an aunt in Black River Falls. And proud of the fact, since Miss Morgan is so nationally famous. And that, Danny, is my agenda for the day. <laughs> Some other time, mister. I got a tough schedule staring me in the face. Police, Mr. Nielsen. May I come in? One of my kids beat up on one of them bullies who... Look, mister, whatever my kids do, I stand behind them 100%. A man was killed today. A man named Lars Nielsen. Lars wanted... Nielsen? That's my name. And look how I'm living. Come on in. Just give me a minute to vacuum the cat lint off this carpet. My wife works all day, so I won't get lonely. She leaves me with the Hoover. And the cat. And the kids who my feet and throw out of the house. I wanted to ask you about... Oh, pardon. The... I want to apologize something to you. The reason I sport this robe and nightshirt is I work nights, sleep days. Huh? Sleep. Uh, uh, Lars Nielsen is dead, huh? It was in the papers. Who gets a chance at him in this house? Lars Nielsen... Hey, that couldn't... <laughs> oh, no, nah, I couldn't. Couldn't be, be what, Mr. Nielsen? Uh, I was a kid once back in Black River Falls in Wisconsin. There was another kid who was a kid with me. Also went by the name of Lars Nielsen. <laughs> this got confusing sometimes, especially on calling up for a date. The girl would say, which Lars Nielsen? Both our families descended from the same Swedish family tree. Made us look alike, sort of coloring, you know. I would describe myself pointedly. That... Lars is dead? We checked Black River Falls Police. The man who was killed came from there. Thirteen years old when I saw him last. I was fourteen. Tell me what you can remember about him. Hmm, so long ago, years. Don't ask me to count how many. It'll help us. It'll help. You're trying to tell me he's dead because somebody... He was shot. Broke into a woman's apartment. To steal? No. Lars? I've been sitting here remembering him from a picnic... High school stuff, you know, summer picnic at the falls and a kid, a, a girl, oh, 12 years old, maybe. Lars went crazy for her, you know, like a 13-year-old does. At that age, he figures it impresses girls to break his neck hanging from trees, to beat up on a friend. <laughs> he chose me. Lovely picnic. I shouldn't laugh, huh? The little girl, you remember who she was? Yeah, sure, certainly. For lots of reasons. First, she was only 12. Second, the aunt she was visiting chaperoned on the picnic. Third, she got a big crush on me. Well, I, I was sophisticated at the age of 14. It made me attractive to 12-year-olds. I kept shoving her away on the other lies. She didn't want him. You remember her name? How could I miss it? This jockey's whispered in my ear every time I turn over. Polly Morgan. Big deal with the ballot. Personally, I can't see it. You haven't seen her since Black River Falls. Look, mister, I got a wife with hay fever. She's spreading here and there. She screams at my kids. And I'm very fond of her. Why should I go looking for exotics like Polly Morgan? She killed Lars Nielsen. 
You see, you answered my question. Danny, come on in. Thanks, Dick. I called the 13 Club a little while ago. The manager said Miss Morgan was in her dressing room, but that you were no place around. Uh, probably fired me this afternoon. As soon as your department would have gone our own cognizant. What are they going to do? Call it uh, justifiable homicide? We'll see. Vic, I, I wanted to talk to you before I talked to her. Sure. Why don't you sit down? Something to drink? No, thanks. Vic, what kind of woman is Polly Morgan? The greatest ballad singer in the country, for my mind. Besides that, Vic, uh, as a person. You saw her perform, you know. What about men? Well, that's what I mean. You saw. She was right, Danny. I had to try to get close to her. Can't blame me, can you? I got teeth marks from this knuckle from thinking about it. They don't come like her. Not only on book checks. Yeah, but what makes her like she is? And why do you think she hates men? Well, I kid myself into thinking she's afraid to let herself go. Has she always been like that? It's a funny thing. What is? She's changed. Oh? How? A, a week, t- ten days ago it happened. What did? She started smiling to herself. Well, what do you mean? Then? Well, I, I was in her dressing room when it happened. She got a phone call. At first, she, she seemed stunned. She almost fainted. All she did was say yes into the phone. When she hung it up, it seemed like something inside of her was glowing. Now, go on. Well... Well, nothing much more, Danny, except she's been sneaking away after recording dates, after performances. Yeah. Well, something else, Vic. Has she ever talked to you about her past life? No. No, but I've wondered about it. Because has it ever occurred to you, the song she sings best, uh, I'm in a mood for love, once in a while, these foolish things are raving, songs like that, all from one season, all uh, from... I've, I've noticed. I'm going to talk to her, Vic. You want to go along? Uh, sure. Sure, I do. I guess the manager didn't hear about my getting fired, Danny. Passed me right into a dressing room. Yeah, listen. Listen to that doll sing. She's killed a man. She can ask for 10 G's a week and get it. Maybe. Look, I've been asking you, Danny, but you haven't been answering. What are we here for? Why did you make... I mailed you a percentage, Vic. Close the door, Miss Morgan. You too. Out. You want everybody to hear what I have to tell you? About what? Lars Nielsen. That's the reason you're using to stay in my dressing room? What do you want me to do? Did you talk him into this, Vic? Polly, baby, ask me to come with him. I don't have any idea. I what... asked you, what do you want me to do? Answer questions. I answered questions all afternoon. You know what happened. You know how I killed that man. You know Nars Nielsen. Why didn't you tell me that? Know him. Know a man like him? Vic, tell me once more about that phone call. What's he talking about? I don't know, baby. Afraid to tell me in front of her, Vic? No, it's not that. Tell me. Well, it was nothing. Polly got a phone call last week. She felt happy about it. Like I never saw Shut it. up, Vic. Sure. Sure, baby. I just want to clear it up. So I told him he got a phone call. So what? Phone call from Lars Nielsen, wasn't it? Yeah. That's right. She did. Yeah, like she was breathing the name. Hey. Vic, shut up, shut up. Lars Nielsen from Black River Falls, Wisconsin. I don't know what you're talking about. Well, you spent a vacation 15 years ago. Maybe I did. I've been lots of places. Black River Falls was a vacation you never forgot. Remember the picnic? Vic... Get him out of here. Look, Danny. Just sit right where you are, Vic. Vic, I was kidding about firing. Look, baby, what do you want me to do? He's a cop. Remember the picnic, Miss Morgan? There were two boys there, both of them named Lars Nielsen. Nothing strange about that in that lake country, especially where most families come from the same stock. Thank you very much for the information you threw. Not quite. You fell in love with one of those boys. (laughs) Fell in love. Oh, what is this, Danny? What are you talking about? Fifteen years ago, Polly was only uh, 12 years old. That's love. It was for Polly. 
Because Polly built it, made a memory, and exaggerated. What do you know? What do you know? Exaggerated it until no other man was allowed in her life. Polly. You too, Vic. What do you know? Then Lars Nielsen called. He'd come to New York. That was the phone call you saw, Vic. You saw what it did to her. Look, Danny, you can't make anything out of a kid falling in love with another kid. You can't tell him. Go... Tell him how wrong he is. So Polly started to sneak away to meet Lars Nielsen and try desperately to make up for 15 lost years. Vic, Vic. And then she found out it was the wrong Lars Nielsen. The wrong? The same name, the same coloring. All your songs, Polly, all the songs that have made you famous, all from the same time, 15 years ago. A summer memory. That's why you killed him, huh, Polly? Because he was fooling him. When you got the permit for the gun, you knew just what you were going to do. The whole thing. A man following you, threatening you. Phony. He made love to me. He told me he was someone else. And I believed him. All those years waiting. Fifteen years. Remembering. Waiting. And then I found out. It wasn't him at all. Polly. Polly, baby. Take your hands off me. Phil. Phil. Autumn night, Broadway echoes with sounds heard only in darkness. Fleeting whispers. A woman's laughter floating down to your end of the bar. Footsteps that fade when you turn a corner. You run toward them, reach out your hand. There's nothing. Only a closing door at the end of a long corridor. It's Broadway. The gaudiest. The most violent. The lonesomest mile in the world. Broadway. My beat. Tonight on SEN Presents, you've been listening to some of the best in radio drama with Fibber McGee and Molly and Broadway is my beat. Join us again Monday evening at the same time, 9.05, when FBN presents Dragnet and Escape.